Okay, guys, let's take a look at today's lesson. So, okay, we're going to look at the polar equations of conics. So this is a conics in polar form. Uh, we're just really going to be looking at a particular form, and that is these right here. These are special in that they all meet the exact same criteria, which is one of the focuses is at the origin. Okay, every time, all the time, one focus is at the origin. That's what's special. One of the things that's special about these equations. And the eccentricity is E. Okay, so that's significant. These four different equations, you actually will not have to memorize those four equations. I will give you those four, but that's all I will give you on this lesson, is I will give you these four. And, that, and I'm going to talk to you about how to tell them apart and how to use them, but I'm just going to give you these four equations. I'm not going to give you all these pictures and such. Okay, so let, let's talk about it. Um, one thing we need to be aware of, it, these are significant for us. These values are significant in that they tell us what kind of a shape, what kind of a conic we're going to be dealing with. Is it going to be a parabola, ellipse, or hyperbola? Notice that if E is 1, it's a parabola. If E is between 0 and 1, it's an ellipse. And if E is larger than 1, it's a hyperbola. The reason this is going to be important to us is because we can actually tell what this is going to create by those values that are in the equation itself. So we can read E off of our equation, and we can determine what kind of conic it's going to be. Or vice versa, we can be given one of these, and we can tell someone what kind of conic, or write an equation for that type of conic. So that's going to be really important. <coughs> that's something that I'm not going to give you. You would need to know that. You would need to memorize those values. Okay, so a parabola is E of 1, ellipse is between 0 and 1, and a hyperbola is larger than 1. So let's look and see how are we going to tell these apart. Um, so let's start with the cosine. Notice there are two that have cosine. And what helps me is to, to tell which is which is that the cosine goes with the directrix of x equals d or x equals negative d. Okay, <coughs> that kind of makes sense to me. Cosine is we equate that with x, right? Cosine is x. So cos the cosine ones go with the x equal directrix. They go with the directrix. They are very much related to the directrix. They even have that value in the equation itself. So it is a pretty big deal. So cosine goes with the x equals. Notice if d is positive, the directrix is over here on the positive side. And if D is negative, the directrix is over on the negative side. But notice the value of D is never negative. Never. And the value of E is never negative. Look at these values. There are no negative possibilities. So when you're writing one of these equations, the numerator should never be negative. And I'm telling you that like I'm trying to emphasize it because every year students get confused and they make the numerator negative. That is not a thing. It's not a thing. E is positive and the value of D is positive. Now in our equation D could be positive or negative but D itself is positive. Okay. All right. So that's how I can remember that the cosines go with the X equal D and X equal negative D. The sine, the two sine ones, we have a sine one here and here. They go with the directrix of y equals, and that really makes sense to me. You know, y is equated with sine, so sine is a y equal d or a y um, equal negative. And notice how this is a plus, goes with the positive d. Uh, this is a minus, goes with the minus. Likewise over here, this one is a plus, goes with plus, the minus goes with minus. Okay, so for the information we are given, we should be able to tell which one of these four equations we're dealing with. Okay. Please notice that every single one has a focus at the origin, and the curves, whether it's, uh, now these all look like parabolas, I understand, uh, but ellipses have directrices and so do hyperbolas. We just don't draw them. So let's say, for instance, that this was a picture of an ellipse. So 
here is one of the focuses of the ellipse and it curves around it like this. The rest of the ellipse would just be uh, over here on the other side, right? That's what it would look like. If this were a hyperbola, notice how one piece of it is curving around here. The other piece of the hyperbola would be over here and there would be another directrix. Okay, so that, that's all, just want to make sure these are not necessarily all parabolas, that's just how the picture looks. We would just have to finish out whichever one, you know, whichever of the conics it is. All right. So one other thing I want to notice while we have these graphs up here before we move to the examples is notice how I have a focus here. This is going to be one of the vertices, right, of whatever we're dealing with whichever kind, and then I have a directrix here. What do you think about these distances? They're still going to be equal, just like if we were in regular function form. The distance between here and here, between the vertex and the focus and the vertex and the directrix are still going to be equal. These segments will be equal. Okay, just like if we were in function form. It's the same kind of concept for us. Okay, so that's something significant to know that those segments are going to be equal. Now this D stands for this whole space right here. That's D. The space between, the distance between the axis and the directrix, that is the value of D. Okay, so do we understand all the numbers, how the letters correspond to the numbers? Are we okay with that? Okay. All right, let's work on uh, this portion right here is just extra explanation of what's going on with those equations. There, there's nothing that you need to memorize. It's just additional information for us to use uh, if, if we want to. Okay, so let's go to our examples on the next page. Okay, so the first one says find a polar equation for the parabola. Okay, we know it's a parabola that has its focus at the origin and whose directrix is the line y equals negative 6. Okay, so it's a parabola, and parabolas all have the same e value, right? We saw that on the other page. e is 1. It's a parabola, right? e is 1 since it's a parabola. And we know that d is 6. So just to kind of... Uh, you know, I don't know which equation to use yet. What I would like to do is to just kind of sketch, just do a little sketch. If my directrix is um, y equals negative 6, it would kind of be down here, right? And I know one of the focuses is here. So do the curves move towards a directrix or away from a directrix? They move away from the directrix, right? So we're looking at and this is the orientation that we're looking at. So we need to think to ourselves, which of those four equations would match that? First of all, let's get the, is it cosine or sine? Well, it has a y equal directrix. Is this going to be a sine or a cosine equation? It's going to be sine because it's y. So I know I'm just writing my template up here. It's e over d1, and I know it's sine. We just agreed, and that's an e right there. So now I have to figure out, is it the plus one or the minus one? And how do I know if it's the plus one or the minus one? By the directrix, right? If it's the directrix is equal to a negative six, then which one of those equations am I going to use, the positive one or the negative one? The negative one, they match, right? We're just, we're, just, we we're talking about how they match. So this is the template that I'm going to fill in to write my equation. Again, you don't have to memorize this. You just need to know when to use each of the four. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's take a look. So I know what E is already. E is 1. So I'm going to fill in um, all the E's. They're 1. And I actually, I know what D is, don't I? Uh, D is always positive, right? It's just 6. And I got that from my directrix equation. So my equation is going to be r equals 6 over 1 minus sine theta. And that's my polar equation for that parabola. 
Okay, how are we doing? We okay? And let's look at the next one. So we have a equation, 10 over 3 minus 2 cosine. Now that is a very pretty way to write the equation. Doesn't that look pretty? It's got like an uh, integer, a 10, and a 3, and a 2. Is that in the form that we need it to be in? And I, I didn't talk enough about it, I guess, that to be in the proper form, this has to be a 1. I don't get to pick, right? It has to be a 1, or it's not in proper form, and I can't read anything off of there. So we need to put it in proper form. We, we need to force this number down here. That number has to be a 1. I don't care about any of the other numbers, but that number has to be a 1. To make it a 1, I have to, you know, multiply by 1. I'm going to multiply by 1 third over 1 third. And so that's going to give me, what, 10 thirds over, okay, we got our 1, minus 2 thirds cosine theta. Now, you can see why textbooks don't like writing the equations like this. That's not near as pretty, is it? It's like got a complex fraction, and it's just kind of messy. So they u usually will write it like this, which, you know, doesn't give us the information we need, does it? I mean, it just doesn't. So looking at this, I know that this location is E, right, in my, f in my formulas. That's E. So I know that E is 2 thirds, which is less than 1. And what do we know about E being less than 1? There's a, like a definition. It's going to be, um, if it's less than 1, therefore it's going to be an ellipse. All right, that's what it's going to be. So when it says, show that the conch is an ellipse, that's what they're talking about. Write this part out. Show that it's an ellipse by using that um, information. Find E and say whether it equals 1 or greater or less than 1. Are we okay with that? Okay. So next it says, find the center of the ellipse and the lengths of the major and minor axes. Okay. So there's this, you know, whole thing we could go through trying to figure out uh, using this equation that's cosine, it's negative, and all that kind of stuff. But to be honest with you, I would, I just graph the quadrantal points and then see what I have. That's really the easiest thing to do. So let's just graph the quadrantal points. Okay, so zero pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2. Let's just graph those. And I'm going to go back to this equation. It's easier to work with when I'm, you know, plugging in numbers. Uh, cosine of 0 is 1, so 10 over 3 minus 2 is, what, 10? So cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so that gives me 10 thirds. Um, cosine of pi is a negative 1, so what does that give me? 10 over 5, that's 2. And cosine of 3 pi over 2, cosine is 0, so that gives me 10 thirds. All right, so let's plot this and see if we can figure out how to graph this and how to get all the information that they want just from plotting those points. That's my recommendation. So I actually, I don't have 10 rings on here, so I chose to make this R go by 2s. So at angle measure 0, we're at 10, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. At angle measure pi over 2, we're at 10 thirds. What's that? A little over 3, so like right here. At angle measure pi, we're at 2. And again, I'm going by 2s, so. Um, and then at angle measure 3 pi over 2, we're at 10 thirds, so somewhere in here. So just looking at those points and knowing that this is an ellipse, we should be able to draw it, right? We should be able to draw that ellipse. We need to keep in mind, though, because this is really uh, kind of confusing, the focus is always right here. One of the focuses is right here at the center. And I know that the focus is inside of an ellipse. So I know that to complete this drawing, I need to, you know, just kind of draw the ellipse. Okay, there's my ellipse. So we graphed it. Find the center of the ellipse. Well, we can just count to the center, right? That's all we need to do is just graph it and count to the center. So two, so the center would be right here. So my center is at what? Let's just say uh, it's 4. And I'm just going to use angle measure 0. I know there's a bunch of different ways I can write that point, but I'm just going to write it with angle measure 0. 
Okay, we got our center. The lengths of the major axis, well, we can just count that, right? So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Um, the major axis is 12. The minor axis, we have a little bit more work to do. I don't know what B is. B isn't anywhere in my formula. But I do know that E, this relationship, E equals C over A, holds true in this form as well. It's the same. In fact, I'm, I'm going to solve this relationship for C. So C is going to equal E times A. Okay, so I know what A is. Right, A is the distance between the center and the vertex, so 2, 4, 6, isn't A 6 here? Right, so A is 6, and what about E? I mean, can't we read that right off of our equation? Right, E is 2 thirds. So that means that C is, what, 4? If I know A and I know C, can't I find B? using the little helper equation, which still works in this form. The little helper equation for ellipse is c squared equals a squared minus b squared, right? That's the little helper for ellipse. So I have 16 equals, what do we say? a was 6, so 36 minus b squared. So b squared is 20. Or b is... Uh, plus minus root 20, which reduces, what is that, 4 times 5, so what, 2 root 5? So this is 2 root 5, and that stands for half of, the, this is this distance, right, from here to here is B. I want that full distance, so that's going to be two of these, right? So the, min, the um, minor axis is 4 root 5. Okay, how's that? Are we okay? Okay, we have one more. I actually need to add something to this. This is very similar to the problem that we just did. It's just instead of an ellipse, we're looking at a hyperbola. Um, there should be added to this that we want to find the links of the transverse and conjugate axis. Okay, so that we need to add on to this problem because it's going to be pretty much very much like the one we just did. Okay, show that the conic is a hyperbola. The only way we can do that is by finding E. That's how we're going to prove it's hyperbola, by finding E. We can't see E like it is right now, right? Because this has to be a 1. So what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to multiply by 1 half over 1 half, right, to force that to be a 1. So 1 half over 1 half, and that gives us 6 over 1 plus 2 sine theta. Okay, so what is our um, E? E is 2. So E equals 2, that's larger than um, 1. Right, are we going larger than 1? Yes, that's larger than 1. So since it's larger than 1, therefore it's a hyperbola. And I'm getting those numbers from that other slide, the E values on the other slide, these things right here. Right? Okay. Okay, great. Now let's sketch the graph again. I encourage you just to graph the quadrantal, um, those points along the quadrantal. 0, pi over 2, pi and 3 pi over 2. Because I know you would be very upset to know these are not rotated. I'm sorry, they're not rotated. Probably be really fun. <gasps> Ooh, that would be something fun to rotate the polar form. Oh, wow. No, we're, we're not going to. I'm, I don't want to disappoint you. We're not going to. I know you're upset, but um, we won't. These are all going to be, you know, either um, they're either going to have a horizontal or vertical axis. They're not going to be rotated. So I already found the points. I'm just writing them down there for you. So let's graph those points. We have an um, 
I went ahead and did this by twos also. So this is by an R of twos, R by twos. Okay, so angle measure zero, we're at six, two, four, six. At angle measure pi over two, we're at two. At angle measure pi, we're at six, two, four, six. And at angle measures three pi over two, we're at negative six. We remember what that means, right? Negative six is gonna push me to the other side, right? So two, four, six here. Now that's a strange configuration. We need to keep two things in mind. One thing is that this is a hyperbola. And the other thing is that this is a focus. And what do the curves do with the focus? They bend around the focus, right? They bend around it. So this is one piece of my graph. They bend around it. So, and it's a hyperbola, right? It told us it's a hyperbola. So where does the other hyperbola piece go? Do we see the point? Right here, the, this point, right? Didn't we just plot that? That's negative six, three pi over two. The other piece goes up here, right? That's where it goes, okay? We, it wouldn't give us a point and not put a curve through it, right? It's a point on the curve. That we have, there's no other place to put it. It has to go through that point. And we know what hyperbolas look like, right? We know there's two branches and that they, you know, curve away from each other. So that's what it has to look like. Are we okay with that? All right, so it says sketch the asymptotes. Well, the asymptotes are going to go through the center. I'm just going to sketch them. Okay, very nice. There's our asymptotes. We sketched it. Find the length of the transverse axis and the conjugate axis. Well, the transverse axis, we can count that, right? And I did by twos, so two, four. Oh, and the center. Let's do, sorry, center. Center, I'm going to use this angle measure of pi over two just to keep things simple. The center is going to be what, four pi over two. Okay, my transverse axis, I can read those. That's basically, what, four spaces long, right? the transverse axis and the conjugate axis what do you think we're gonna have to do about that the same thing we did on the other problem right use C and A so E equals C over A this formula right here so C equals E times A E we know is 2 A is half of this distance right which is 2 so C is four. Now we get to use the hyperbola's little helper equation. Remember the hyperbola's helper equation is C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So I have 16 equals, so C squared is four squared, 16. Um, A was two, so A squared is four plus B squared. So B squared is 12. So that means B is root 12, or what is that, 2 root 3, right? And so that's B is half of the distance, right? We need to double that. So the uh, conjugate axis is 4 root 3. Okay, how is that? Are we okay? Okay.